In the last couple of lectures, you've seen me use the copy command cp to copy one file to another. Could we actually write one in C? And the answer is yes, it's actually pretty simple. So let's try that. Let's copy ASCII.c to copy.c, and we will program our own version of copy.c. Okay, let's edit the file and go back to our normal stub. Okay, as usual we start with the main and we'll have our integer, integer variable ch and we'll do a for loop again. And we're going to introduce a new function called getCar which I'll explain in a little more detail later. Let me just write this up and then I'll explain it. Okay, that's it. That's rather interesting. Um, what's happening here? Okay, there's a lot of interesting things happening. First, I'm introducing a new function that's defined in the C language called getCare. GetCare reads characters from the standard input. The standard input is your terminal. All right, so the idea is that as I type things at the terminal, they'll be copied back out to the terminal. And we'll see how we can actually change some of that and how that works. What this says is that we're going to continue to grab characters from the standard input until we have reached the end of file character. Now we don't really know what the end of file character is. It's defined for us in C. And in order to access that, we have to include stdio.h. Okay, so for the EOF definition. Okay, to get back to this, we're going to keep reading characters until we reach the end of file. And this says that we'll continue to update by continuing to get more characters. Every single time we get more character, another character, we'll simply put car, that character, to standard output. And we'll just keep doing this until this com comparison is true, in which case we fall out of the for loop and we return exit success. So let's see how that works. Let's compile this. All right, that compiled cleanly. So let's just run copy. And now let me type some words. Um, okay, it took the standard input that I typed and it put it back out in the standard output. I can type whatever I want. And again, standard input has been returned back out of standard output. This is a form of copy. Okay, going from standard input to standard output is useful but it's actually more useful if we can change standard input and standard output. And what do I mean by that? In Linux, we can change what standard input is. So for example, say I say copy of return dot C. You'll notice the less than sign here. What this is saying in Linux is that I don't want the standard input to be what I type at the terminal anymore. I want my standard input to be this file. This file is going to be read in via standard input to copy and blasted back out as standard output. So this is like, in some sense, viewing the file, all right? which we could also do with a very simple command in Linux called cat. Notice how it had the same effect. Cat actually just reads in a file and spits it back out as standard output. And that's precisely the same thing that copy is used for here. What if we actually want to copy it to a different file name? Then we could say copy return.c, and we can send the standard output to another file called, say, zzz. So what we're going to do here is take return.c is going to be the standard input to copy, and the standard output will no longer be the terminal window, but a new file called zzz. Let's take a look at zzz. It's exactly the same. Let's do a difference between zzz and return.c. There's no difference between the two files. We've actually done a copy of the two files 
with a very simple piece of code. Okay, um, we've learned quite a bit in this lecture. First of all, we had to include a new library called stdio.h in order to get the end of file definition. We've used the for loop again. We've done it in an interesting way where we continue to get characters until we've reached the end of file and we simply spew them back out from standard input to standard output. But what I've also taught you is that we can redirect standard input and standard output to perform more useful functions. All right, that concludes this lecture.